This is an egg-eating snake, and it is definitely one of the weirdest snakes in the world. That's right, this snake right here is from South Africa, and it actually eats eggs. How crazy is that? So we're gonna show you a handful of really bizarre, weird, weird snakes. Some of the weirdest snakes in the world. This one is a feisty little monkey right here. Woo, doggy! But wow, is it absolutely amazing. What makes these snakes so absolutely interesting and so weird is the fact that they eat eggs whole. I mean, just take a look at this. This snake doesn't even look like it could fit in its mouth, but it will go up to it and it just opens its mouth and devours it like crazy. And the interesting thing is that these guys basically have very, very small to no teeth whatsoever so they just use the pressure of their self pushing against the egg to actually kind of push it down then ultimately they will undulate it down into their throat area and they actually have a throat that kind of expands quite a bit bigger than the rest of their body made just for having eggs in it and then ultimately they'll crack the egg inside ingesting all the albumin and yolk and then spit up the eggshell what a weird animal you got to admit that's one of the weirdest snakes on the planet there is no doubt that the calabar burrowing python is one of the most bizarre snakes in the world for sure it's just a really weird west african snake i've always said it's like the poop emoji snake right this is its head right there and then this is its tail on this side here so its head and tail looks almost the same and then of course as it goes into a defense position it actually rolls up like this like the little emoji poop thing right and it's just such a bizarre animal and unfortunately there's just not a lot of these captive bred unfortunately they do come in from the wild and typically don't do very well this animal was actually captive hatch over in Africa and I got it as a baby a fresh hatchling and it's done well for about the last 10 years but I haven't been able to get it a mate but look at that little head right there it is so weird and then to make things even weirder it's it's actually in the boa day family but they call it a python and it lays eggs so it's just a all-around weird animal classification wise looks wise I mean you can't think of a weirder looking snake than a calabar burrowing python hey guys do what happened what happened she got I got it. him! I got, no, you don't have him good, though. Junior, crazy. Can you, like, pick him up? Yeah. Ooh. See what you did now? That was close, Jason. See what? I, he's out. He hasn't bit me yet. Start thinking. Start thinking. <laughs> Start thinking. Use, Use your brain. There he goes. Use your brain. Get your little tongue going. This is Junior. This is our new Tegu. As you guys know, um, we had little Tato in here, but we got this beautiful guy, and we're gonna do some harness training with him. How did we do this last time? So, oh uh, yeah. So, wait, no, no. Dad pees first, and then we last. Oh yeah. Boom. Great job. Sit him down, and you can run by himself at first. That's not bad. Good job, Junior. Good boy. Go, Junior. Go. Good boy, Junior. This way. Come on, this way, Junior. See that training? Oh, dude, squeeze your door. Whatever. So now he's getting a little bit tired, and that's okay. He's still doing great. We're you know, gonna give him a little bit of pets here. Wow. And there you guys have it. A little bit of junior training for you. He just doesn't want to be Oh, this guy's awesome. My daily egg hunt is on. There's a bunch of female ball pythons that are due to lay eggs. This girl is definitely not laid. This girl should be laying any time. This is actually a big pinstripe, so we're just kind of peeking here. Oh, uh, no, look at how she is so close. Certainly, within the next couple days, she's gonna lay for sure. And this just, uh, it's just an exciting part of my day, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. I come in every day, look at a pastel yellow belly, absolutely loaded. She should be laying anytime. This pinstripe should be any minute, is it? No, look at her, but the way she's laying, she's starting to look like, I think tomorrow, maybe the next day at the latest, this girl is gonna go. So again, we probably have about seven or eight females that are right on the cusp of producing right now that could have eggs anytime. This is just a fire entry girl, no eggs here. But uh, you know, some days there's no eggs. Other days there's two or three clutches. So it's the way it goes. I think there's, let's see, one more girl down here, which is actually just a head albino bred to an albino big old girl. Doesn't have any eggs over here. And let me check this girl up here. And oh, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this. Okay, whoa, yes. Take a look at that. Looks like some beautiful eggs. This is actually an entry head for pie, bred to a pastel pie. So let's go ahead, get this girl down. We'll set up an egg box and pull this clutch. So yes, we got a clutch of eggs today. All right, come on, mama. There you go. Again, she is not a big girl but the clutch looks really nice. And remember how the first few clutches we had some fertility issues and as we're getting going here, oh, mama, oh, she wants to bite me. Don't do it, mama. Oh, yep, 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 whoop. She's a good mama protecting her eggs. You're okay, girl, you're all right. I'm just, ah. She's one of those girls that is gonna give me a little bit of a hard time getting the eggs out, but hey, 
she did a really good job. And look at that clutch right there. Again, not a big female at all. And again, it's a Henchy hat for pied, and she was bred to a pastel pied male. And this is that beautiful male right here. Again, it's a pastel of pied. The pied is recessive. The pastel, of course, is incomplete dominant. He actually has fathered several clutches this year. The first clutch wasn't good, remember, it was pin head to pie. But this one and the last couple have been awesome. Let's go ahead and get these eggs in the egg box right here. Again, beautiful, only two, four good eggs. No slugs, can't complain really. Probably gonna be one of the smallest clutches I've gotten this year, to be totally honest with you. I probably won't have many clutches under six eggs this year. But hey, I'm not complaining because hopefully there's gonna be a couple beautiful pies in this clutch. You know that my life's mission is to get people to love reptiles. Well, you can help out by joining the army. That's right, you can be part of the reptile army and you can go out there and you can make people love reptiles as much as I want to make people love reptiles. You go to reptilearmy.com, you can get your swag, but do me a favor, if you get some, you go out there and you represent the movement and you make sure people know that you love reptiles and how awesome they are. So go ahead and go to reptilearmy.com and join the movement. Certainly another really bizarre snake is what they call a sunbeam snake or a xenopeltis. And it's just a very unusual, highly iridescent snake that comes from Southeast Asia. These guys really can range all the way from Malaysia to China to Thailand, all over the place. And there's actually two little species. This was a little junk filo monkey. In the wild, these guys will eat snakes, they'll eat amphibians, and they will eat small rodents as well. In captivity, thankfully, he eats rodents, which is really good. And they're really just a really interesting, bizarre, cool animal. Again, very unique. Only two species in the entire Xenopeltis genus, which makes them very unique. They've got that little small head. They spend most of their time burrowed, to be totally honest with you. That's one of the reasons when we got this animal, we thought it'd be a really cool display animal for the reptarium. The problem is they hide all the time. They just are buried 100% of the time. But when they're out of their buried nest, oh my gosh, look at the iridescence and beauty of that animal. I mean, there's probably no other iridescent animal better than the Xenopeltis. There's no doubt about that. And it certainly is up there with some of the weirdest snakes in the world. Well, this is certainly a weird snake. There is no doubt about that. And of course, this is a rhino rat snake. And interestingly enough, I've been working with rhino rat snakes for quite some time and the ones I'm raising up now are all hyper for some reason. The ones I had before were super tame. This one wants to bite me in the face and this isn't the one that typically is bitey which is really weird but of course they have that appendage and that's why they are called the rhino rat snake. These guys come from Vietnam and they use that little appendage there as an actual lure right? So these guys are going to be up in the trees in Vietnam and that nose is going to look like a grub worm and of course a bird is going to come up and think oh I'm going to get a meal of this beautiful grub worm and then oh, look at this guy coming at me like this and of course that bird comes up thinks it's a grub and this snake gets a good meal at it. it's perfect adaptation what an amazing evolutionary thing I have no idea why the two rhino rats I raised up a year and a half ago are so feisty they are crazy because my bigger adults are really cool but again definitely one of the weirder snakes you'll ever see and certainly up there with the weirdest snakes in the world here we go oh boy it's setting time come on hmm. Let me think about this. Yeah. Reptarium. Oh well, yeah, it's always a reptarium. Until you get too good, which is probably now. Probably already too good for this. But. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> this is a tough one. This, this is, is a tough one. one. I actually I'm ripped the head off. I'm gonna say, um, hang on, let me just think about this for a second. Let me think, let me think, let me think. It's gonna be the one, guys. Is it Ben and Jerry? No. Okay, second guess. Kunish or Island Rat. Got it? Yeah. Second. It took me two times this time. There you go. Dang. All right. <laughs> How do you know? Super excited. We have our first official meeting with my architect and structural engineer since we hired the firm to talk about the expansion. And now Lori finally let me back in here. Just collect one clutch of eggs, but uh, let's uh, what, what, the, a little little tiny egg time. Okay, let's go ahead and see. Of course, this is a great clutch though. This is a Mexican black king snake. You guys know how absolutely amazing Mexican black king snakes are. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull these eggs really quick. I'll stick these in the egg box right here, and then we'll take a look at Mama. Just make sure she's all good. Look at how gorgeous that snake is. Mexican black kings are unbelievably beautiful, and of course. She definitely is going to need a little bit of water. She's going to need a little bit of food. And for those of you guys that see that there's no water in this cage, I've said this 
last year. I'll explain it again this year, probably multiple times. We take the water out a day or two before they're about to lay because they will sometimes lay a clutch in the water and then the eggs actually go bad. So we'll get her all cleaned up, get her some fresh water, get her some food in the next day or so. And let's go ahead and see how many eggs we've got. We've got two, four, six, seven eggs. So all in all, seven beautiful eggs from our Nigritus. And uh, hey, you know, Lori was a little bit mad at me, but at the same time, I did get to collect this clutch of eggs, so I kind of won. We're full on now. And this actually is an albino that is het for lavender snow and is bred to a lavender snow. So again, this was that girl I showed a few days ago that was just loaded up with eggs. Absolutely beautiful animals. Again, half this clutch is going to be purple snakes and half of them are going to be purple with yellow bands. That is absolutely incredible. Let's take a look and see what she has. Wow, that is a gorgeous clutch of eggs right there. I can't complain about that. Going to open my egg box really quick and take a look at that. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Two, four, six, eight, nine nine beautiful eggs. I mean, that is great for a cow king. So again, we'll get her cleaned up. We'll get some water in with her. We'll feed her up, get her ready for second clutches. About six weeks from now is usually when you see a second clutch from a colubrid, but uh, that's awesome. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, here's a playlist of me collecting snake eggs like crazy. Over on this side, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely beautiful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.